All right, welcome to uh, Buffalo Airport on today's video. And we're gonna be traveling from uh, Buffalo, New York, all the way over to Malaga, Spain. And I'm gonna see whether or not it was actually worth doing this journey rather than getting a more direct flight. But we did save nearly $1,000 each on a ticket in economy to do it this way. So we're flying from Buffalo, Detroit, Detroit, Paris, Paris, Malaga, about an 18 hour day of flying. And it starts right now. It is now 9.40 in the morning here in Buffalo. And we're gonna go and check in for our first flight, which is to Detroit. This really is a nice airport here in Buffalo. It's so calm, relaxed, uh, no hassle like Toronto would be. So much easier to get through. It's, uh, it's just a cool little airport. I right, just made myself a coffee. Now, if you're gonna come here and you want a tea, good luck. There's no tea bags, they don't do tea. This is uh, <laughs> Buffalo. Uh, tea is only found in certain parts of America, apparently, and Buffalo is one of them where you won't find it. So, coffee only. All right, the first problem already delayed about 40 minutes. The aircraft is still in Detroit. They're saying it's maintenance, but uh, there is a bit of nasty weather down there, too. So, I'm wondering whether the weather's more to do with it rather than maintenance. All right, we're still here at uh, Buffalo Airport. Flight's delayed now an hour and a half. Uh, they're telling us it's uh, left Detroit, but I don't think it has. It's uh, still showing on the ground on my app. But hey, not to worry, we've still got a few hours spare. But I think uh, most of the delays out of Detroit right now are weather related due to uh, ice storms, sleet and snow coming up from the west. So in the meantime, we just wait. Uh, I meant to have took off at 10 past 12. Looks like we're now gonna be leaving around about 1.30, but we'll see. All right, our flight's just arrived from Detroit, two hours late. But thankfully, the weather's still pretty good here, so we should be out hopefully in the next hour. It's just going to pull up to the gate in a few seconds. So our delay at Buffalo, which was actually a pleasant stay, is finally over, and it's time to uh, board our aircraft for our flight down to Detroit. Quick scan of our boarding Hello. passes, and we were away down the jet bridge. Thank you very much. Onto the aircraft. And does anyone else do this? Touch the aircraft before they get on board. Anyway, uh, this is our aircraft. It's a Boeing 717, something I've never flown on before. And uh, first impressions, it's much better than the usual regional jet. Once in our seats, the doors were shut and the plane began to push back pretty quickly. And before we know it, we were taxiing down the runway at a pretty fast speed. Uh, in a smaller plane, you really, really notice um, these things a lot more than in a bigger plane. Anyway, before we know it, we were uh, taxiing down the runway and taking off. takeoff we found ourselves climbing out over buffalo making a sharp left and coming back over fort erie canada which is directly below us and i live not too far away from there so anyway here's the uh, flight plan which i managed to get a recording of on flight radar which shows us flying along the coastline then into detroit and before we knew it after just over an hour we were landing in detroit Boom. First leg of the trip is now over. We're in Detroit and we should have had a five hour layover here. Thankfully though, that delay has helped us out a little bit. It's now down to three and a half hours. So we decided to go and get something to eat and have a walk Thank around you. Detroit Bye. Airport. Right, one flight down, two more to go. We can do this. We got this. 15 more hours. All right, plenty to wander around and have a look at. See where we gotta go next. We found our plane for the next flight, but we've got a few hours to kill. So, uh, we're gonna find something to eat. We'll pass a couple of hours before we have to board. 
And if anything, I'm really dying for a cup of tea, but they don't do tea. Well, that one in Buffalo had no tea. Fancy a bit of pad thai. Got a few hours to kill before I eat, so before I get on the plane. So let's do this. Oh, it's lovely. Thank you. No problem. Thanks very much. And then I got the pad thai here for you. Oh, that's good. Do you have any soy sauce or anything? That's good. Pretty good. Enjoyed that. Anyway, that's our flight. Oh, put some light on. That's our flight over there. Uh, Airbus A330 taking us over to Paris. All right, we're getting ready to board the next leg of our flight to Paris on time, which is nice. Uh, so we left, felt like we left our house like nine, ten hours, nine hours ago. <laughs> we haven't got very far, uh, but uh, yeah, we're on our way for the next leg. No, no. <laughs> but we did save a load of money. <laughs> Forty-three A and B. Forty-three A and B. Thank you. All righty. This is where we are. Emergency exit. Once we boarded this flight, things started to go downhill pretty quickly. Uh, once we got on board, the captain informed us we we're going to have a 30 minute delay because all the information he put into his computer had been wiped clean, so we had to reprogram everything. And then due to severe winds and turbulence, we had to go further north. So here's the flight plan of where we went. And the reason why I'm putting this on right now is because my GoPro audio also broke right at the beginning of the flight but i didn't realize until towards the middle or the end then i had to switch over to my, my other camera and also uh, use my uh, phone a bit more but i did manage to snap these photographs like this this is the northern lights believe it or not uh, just by greenland and uh, so anyway i once i figured it out i uh, managed to uh, switch over to the gopro 8 and resume recording uh, good morning it is uh oh what time is it I can't see my watch. Oh, 1.35 in the morning, uh, Toronto time. Um, didn't get much sleep. Very bumpy flight, uh, a lot of turbulence. Um, we're going to be cutting it close trying to get onto our next flight now because we are delayed still. Uh, we, we departed half an hour late, but the flights took an hour longer uh, due to having to go really far north to avoid a lot of the bad weather. So. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, France, into Paris until about 9 o'clock and our flight's at 9.40 so we're going to be really cutting it close because I think we have to clear customs and then we're going to make a mad dash to our Air France flight which leaves at 9.40 so it's going to be very close. Anyway, I'm just waiting for them to serve coffee and then we'll be uh, heading down to, uh, for landing. Flight leaves in 35 minutes, and I don't know what we're meant to do in here going through customs or we just go straight to the gate or whatever. So, we've got to find out quickly. Well, let's get going. All right, oh my god, move! I know it's like the slowest people in the world are in front, side by side. Oh, for fuck's sake, let us pass. We've got to run. Wow, we've got to find it. It's like the amazing race. Gee. Flight connections to the right. Let's go. Kind of trying to figure out what to do here. There's no one around to ask. So we're just trying to work it out as we go along. We literally have 20 minutes to get to our flight. Oh, we haven't got a clue where we're going. All right, we're the next stop. Gotta have faith that we're gonna make it. Just got to. For votre sécurité, nous vous recommandons de vous tenir au bar de maintien. Tell you what, this is some bloody hike. Trains running. All right, 
we're down to the last few minutes. I don't even know how far this is. We just keep seeing signs and we keep following them. And we've not, still not seen any uh, fans, employees anywhere. <sighs> keep going, keep going. This S before G. <sighs> Looks like some kind of security. Probably a bit of passport control here, maybe. Right, let's get going. I can tell you one thing. The French are f***ing rude. Oh my god. No help whatsoever. Uh, the F-56. Oh, right at the bloody end. <laughs> of course it is. We had the very last gate. Alright, we found the gate. It's closed. Flight leaves. Okay. We missed the flight. <laughs> so we're stuck in Paris Airport now until 9 o'clock tonight. 12 hours. Great. Uh, we ran like crazy. Uh, we got to the security and the guy there says, oh, you'll make it, you'll make it. And there's only six people in front of us. Then when it came to us, the woman just stopped, literally stopped because the woman in front of us had so much stuff, she was in the wrong place and they were faffing about and we lost five minutes there. And those five minutes cost us a lot. And once we got through there, we went through uh, uh, the border checkpoint really quick, really fast, no problem there at all. Except for one guy who works as an information guy, gave us a lot of attitude because Danny, there's no one in the room, Danny went under the, uh, the, the uh, I can't think of the word now because I'm so tired. Uh, Danny went under the uh, belt to cut, uh, cut in the line like cut free but no one was there and this guy just went nuts and just said to us this isn't America you know you're not in America now that was it I was like you rude little prick so I told him I'm not American I'm Canadian <laughs> we're still at the airport uh, we've been here five hours now going from terminal to terminal trying to entertain ourselves and going for another croissant now we've got another seven hours until our flight <laughs> the one that rebooked us on. So, yeah, another coffee. What else can you do? So taking this uh, cheaper flight and spending a bit more time is actually backfired on us only because of the weather. And, oh, well, I actually won't say the weather. It was actually due to the weather and incompetent security staff here at the transfer area. That is the only reason why we missed our flight. We ran, we would have made it, but the security guys were just being jerks. <laughs> around the eight-hour mark of waiting around, we got a bit tired, needed to recharge ourselves and lie down. So we found a quiet area in the terminal where many of the people have been doing the same action, this top area, uh, by gate 44, F44 or F45, I think we're at. And literally, we just lay down and made the most of it and probably grabbed about 30 minutes. I know Danny fell asleep for a good 30 minutes. I lay there for about 20 and got up because I got pins and needles in my arms and went and got myself another croissant and a coffee. Still here, by the way. Oh, my God. It's been such a long fucking day. Um, 7.25 in the evening. Uh, we've been at the airport now. Ten and a half hours. Another hour and a half, 40, an hour and 40 minutes before we leave. And it's a two and a half hour flight down there. So I'm just trying to work out how long it's gonna, it, how long the whole flight's gonna be. Uh, we got to Buffalo Airport yesterday. Uh, 9.30, I think it was, 9.30, which would be 3.30 in the morning here. So by the time we get to Nera, which is going to be just after what, probably one o'clock in the morning, local time, that means 46 hours. I'll stop there for a minute. My brain failed. It wasn't 46 hours. I'll tell you what it was later. And it was going so great until that one flight. Oh, well, we've still got one flight to go. All right, why well, sit here waiting for the... Uh to board the flight to Malaga. Um, we've been here 12 hours, by the way. It is now 8.30 at night. Um, 
The whole flight thing was about uh, see how, how if it was worth saving all this money. Excuse me. Hmm. Dining should work here. Look at that Charlie commands out. Yeah. So as I was saying, um, the whole trip. We started off doing this video to see whether it was worth doing the multi-leg flight. We got a really good deal at 650 bucks Canadian return, but it meant to Detroit. It, it's meant to stop in Detroit and then also Charles de Gaulle then into Malaga. Um, when we booked it originally, the flights around then are about $1,400. We just checked Air Transat's website because they were doing a couple of direct flights. Well, they've actually increased the flights now to five per week, but they're not direct. It's a flight to Toronto to Montreal and then Montreal to Malaga. And yeah. Uh, this is the price for a 10-day duration next week. <laughs> $3,000 Canadian. It was 2,023 euros to fly out next Monday and stay for 10 days. Uh, just pause out there for a moment. Just re-looked at the price with Air Transat because it is the most direct route. And they do a flight which is with WestJet to Montreal and Montreal then you take Air Transat over. I just looked at it. The price was in US. So the price you saw on my phone a moment ago, that was the price back then. As of today, this is the price, US dollars, nearly 1,500 US dollars, which is just over $2,000, which means this flight I took was $1,400 cheaper. So uh, I think we got a bloody good bargain. And it may even be worth staying the actual uh, 12 hours here at the airport. I mean, that is unbelievable. So anyway, we're on to our last leg of the journey. Uh, they're just loading uh, passengers. Pre-boarding anyway. Uh, we're on an Airbus A319, so it's a small Airbus. Uh, well, there's a lot of people here, so uh, hopefully none of us get bumped. All right, finally on our last leg of the uh, trip. 34 hours after we started it. We're <sighs> getting there. All right, off an Airbus A319 Air France down to Malaga. It's like a two and a half hour, maybe two hours, two and a half hour flight. It's a full flight. I'm not even sat with Danny, so. Uh, yeah, here it goes. The flights were busy due to the fact that it was a holiday in Spain today, or on this particular day I should say. Uh, many Spaniards were returning from a weekend in France, having visited places such as uh, Euro yeah, Disney. Yeah. Alright, get on the flight. Uh, Danny's one behind me on the aisle. Uh, full flight, uh, they're still loading it on. I don't know where they're all going to sit. I really don't. This thing is packed. So, uh, yeah, Malaga's popular, right? Tourist destination, south of Spain. So, hopefully, we'll be out of here in about 10 minutes. Doors closed and get out of here. Okay, here we go. Third flight on our multi leg stop final leg and this is from Paris to Malaga uh, short flight uh, winds were good everything was gonna be good for us this turned out to be a really smooth flight actually it was just over two hours I think it's two hours and five minutes and before we knew it we were uh, in Malaga and now we're in Malaga It is now just approaching midnight, Tuesday. And uh, um, uh, we left the house 8.45 Monday morning. So, which was, yeah, so we're approaching the 34 hour mark. El Taxi de Keith. <laughs> Only 12 hours late. Hey, I'm doing very well, Keith. Oh, good to see you, my friend. You, oh, great to see you. Yeah, good. Oh. Oh. Morning. Slept well last night. Got to bed at three, nearly four, and I just woke up at 11 o'clock. Mountains, 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 hills, hills, hills. The town is just down there, and so is the uh, sea. Uh, we've got a pool here. It's just a really nice place here. So welcome to Neha in uh, the Costa del Sol. 
So as you have just seen, we made it to Spain okay in the end, and uh, I'll tell you the time very, very shortly. Um, but we had to make our way back after our stay there, of course, so this is basically us just taking off. I'm not going to show you the whole video and make a video of it, because actually the, the flight home went um, very smoothly. All the flights actually ran on time, uh, which was really good. All our connections were met. Everything went very, very smoothly. The only problem we had going home was when we arrived at uh, JFK. It was a disaster of an airport. It really was. It's an airport I'm going to make sure I try and stay away from uh, next time. Uh, once you get through security, it's fine. It's Being in security is just atrocious. And another thing I want to point out, Amsterdam. When we was in Amsterdam, nice airport, showing its age a little bit, but boy, was it expensive. Very expensive to buy something to eat or drink. Very expensive. So just keep that in mind if you ever fly through Amsterdam. All right, here's what you want to know. How long did it take us and how much did we really save? Well, um, the, <laughs> the total for trip time ended up being 34 hours. It was meant to have been about 19 hours, uh, but with the delays and then the 12-hour delay in um France, it worked out that the actual from the moment we arrived at Buffalo Airport for check in, which was 9 15 local time, uh, to the moment we got our bags and left the airport at Malaga was exactly 34 hours. So, was it worth all the money we saved and how much did we save? Well, um, our flight I kept saying 650, it was 680 for some reason, it was 680. And uh, that's the base fare. All the fares you look at online, what you look for are base fares. They don't include your baggage or anything like that. So we have to add our baggage on top of that, which was $75, uh, which apparently was there and back because we only paid the one fee. And then we did upgrade ourselves to the emergency exit seats. Uh, but I won't include that in this portion um, because that's not really what we're about here. It's how much did we pay for the flight itself in regards of the seat. So it was 680 plus $75, uh, which was $755 Canadian, including all taxes. So the average price we saw when we booked our flight, just after we booked our flight, was around about $1,500. Uh, but we did see it go up uh, to as much as over $2,000. So we saved easily in excess of $1,000 each Canadian. So yeah, uh, would we do it again? Uh, when we booked the flight, uh, my wife said, oh, it'll be an adventure. Well, it sure was an adventure, especially being in Paris for 12 hours. But overall, you know what? That 12-hour layover actually worked to our advantage a little bit. Uh, if we didn't have the 12-hour lay layover, we would have arrived in Malaga uh, just after lunchtime. Would have been tired, groggy, had a little bit of a sleep and gone out for a bite to eat that night. And so we didn't really lose much because time we got there, it was nighttime. We went straight to bed, had a good night's sleep. And we were refreshed for the next day. No jet lag. Everything was really, really good. So it worked out good in that way. So would we do it again? Yeah, I probably would. If I can save that much money on a return ticket, but it takes me an extra 10 hours or more, yeah, I'll definitely do it. Um, just got to keep an eye on the connecting times. Next time I'll make sure there's a little bit more between the two flights. Um, between the uh, flight arriving in Paris and the one departing Paris to go to Malaga. It was a little close. Uh, in future, I'm going to make sure I keep an eye on at least two hours for departures, um, connecting times between an international flight and then onto a domestic. So yeah, overall, I'll definitely do it again. It was a great experience. It was great fun traveling around different airports and seeing the sights that way. Thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly enjoyed the flights. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like and a thumbs up. And um, yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. I've got more uh, flight reviews coming up very, very shortly and also some more adventure stuff around the Niagara region where I live and hopefully we'll get back flying again very very soon until the next time thanks for watching stay safe